Yeah, get it on. Welcome to the show. You're watching live on the Video Podcast Network. Tonight's guest, John Sebastiani. Tell you all about him in a second. Uh, if you're watching live and you have a question, use the comment section and maybe we'll answer it. And subscribe to all our shows at youtube.com slash Adam Carolla. Hey, that's me. Tonight's show is brought to you by our good friends at audible.com. Audible has over 100,000 books. That's not possible. This has got to be some, that's got to be one of those, um, what's a typo when it's for numbers? Number O. It's got to be one of those number O's. It's got to be. There can't be 100,000 books to choose from, including what? <laughs> My little old book, not Taco Bell material, shucks, fellas, or in 50 years, wealthy chicks. Now, you want to try it out? You want to try one out for free? How about you go online? How about you go to audible.com slash Corolla Live? That's audible.com forward slash Corolla Live and try it for free. And now let's get on with the show. From fabulous Los Angeles, California, Hollywood, home of the stars, the magic factory where dreams come true, culture capital of the world, jewel of the Pacific, it's the Adam Carolla Show. Yeah, get it on, got to get it on, no choice but to get it on, Mandy. Get it on. Welcome to the program. Good day, Allison Rosen. Hello, Adam Carolla. Good day, Bald Brian. Get you, get you, get you. <laughs> John Sebastiani is coming in. He is an entrepreneur. His family's made wine for over 100 years, so I got questions for him, and now he's making jerky. So I feel like if you left me, well, you know what? Forget about the island part. I'm tired of being trapped on an island. Yeah, you might be trapped in prison. Let's just say I couldn't shop anymore. I know it doesn't sound as, as exciting, but no more shopping. I just take wine and jerky. If you, if you had to leave me with two, like you got two th groups you got to choose from, I'd stick with the wine and the jerky. Uh, he's got a master's degree from uh, Columbia University. And uh, speaking of Columbia, boy, that Colombian River uh, Pinot Noir, you guys ever have that? Yes. That is goddamn good stuff. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that if you were alone on an island, eventually you would make wine or jerky. Mm, the jerky like, with part time would be done in hand. the first evening. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> oh sister? Uh, all right. Speaking of wine, uh, Mangria out there and now available in Pennsylvania. And that's a big deal. And you can order at the Pennsylvania State Liquor Store. So uh, You hear that, Quakers? It's all. <laughs> Probably they didn't hear it. Come and get it, folks, with beards and no mustaches and crazy hats. Come on down. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, as you know, I'm uh, one of Philly's uh, finest. That's right. Your picture is everywhere. I'm on the that wall you get your of many washed. hoagie shops. They're proudest son. Yeah, I'm the proudest son, and now available in, uh, like I said, Pennsylvania. You go down to the state store and you uh, ask for it by name, and uh, they'll go get you some. So, a um, couple things, um, Allison. I hope you're as excited about this as I am. Uh, I watch TV and I make note of the commercials and. A lot of stuff going on with the Kotex uh, world these days. Oh, do tell. You have my attention. Well, we saw the one before where the Kotex rebel chicks were taking back the uh, mean streets of Boston a, a by suburb, yeah. going out and uh, tagging up the wall. And It's not your mother's tampon or pad. Well, their whole thing was father's. bold in your face tampon styling. Right. Oh, yeah, because the packaging was all, like, splashy. Right. And... <laughs> One thing I don't think of when I think here's of tampons. The, here's the thing. It's right up there with, you know, the pediatric surgeons who have, like, the happy face scrubs? Yeah. I just think that— Wait, who, it, who are you dressing for? Cash Adams with yeah, the nose? Well, uh, what I'm saying is, is you know, the guy's warming up the rib spreader. You're going under with the uh, with the MJ's milk going in your arm, and you see the guy with the crazy smiley face thing. That doesn't make things better. No. It screws things up. It's more frightening. It makes it more surreal. Like yes. One time, I told you that I got the nitrous gas. I had a horrible root canal that was like a marathon root canal. I had the nitrous going, and it was back in the day when you would pick a CD to listen to. Like, mm -hmm. hey, this is high, high tech dentist. You can pick. And it was like Burbank, 108 degrees, middle of July. And I grabbed the Manhattan transfer because... I thought, I'm just going to listen to jazz or something, smooth jazz, while I... 
and it was a Christmas album. <laughs> and it was like chestnuts roasting <laughs> on an open. And the guy's drilling away and like That's sawing awful. away. And I'm high on nitrous, and it awful. fucked things up. Yeah. So you don't want yeah nothing. You don't want to basically. You don't want to feel anything in these moments. And a smiley right. face. You're or the forcing holidays. me to feel something. Right. Like and, they pipe in the scent of turkey. All right. And tampons are the same thing. I don't want to know. You don't want to know. Let's slide them in the purse. Tampons. First off, the tampon box should be made of whatever leather the purse is made out of. Yeah, completely camouflaged. That's right. Should just slide. They should be called Camilla Pons. You're on to something. <laughs> So you never find them, but you're on the trademark right. that shit quick. The uh, so the latest tampon, the Kotex commercial I saw was uh, we'll run it for you, and you can you can tell me what you think, Allison. I'm, okay. I'm curious. A lot of horror stories about tampons getting lost. You shouldn't go swimming. You'll get attacked by a shark. People would be able to smell my period. Not true. With you by Kotex, you can break the cycle of misinformation. Get involved at generationnote.com. Right. This is you can break the cycle of the your cycle? grandmother's misinformation. Everyone knows that that's all bullshit. Who My, are they talking to? I, I had women back when they used to use a live chinchilla and have to just wash <laughs> it down by the river for, for a tampon. Hey, it's environmental. <laughs> going, going red. Um, I mean green. The point is... is <laughs> They, when they say cycle, I'm not sure what they mean by the cycle of misinformation. But everything's about making... everything is about every ad is about taking one of every color that that that, that was a one of every color yeah, group, and then talk about the cycle of misinformation. I do not, you know, I don't hang around with that many 17 year old broads. You know, maybe a baker's dozen a month, right? But nothing, a, nothing weird or untoward. Just the average no, no, amount. No, no, no. Just get plus. It. 12. Just getting to know each other, chit you know, chit chat, small talk, stuff like that, doodling, you know, be dazzling, hello kitty things and stuff like that. It's normal. Um, I don't know all the misinformation that's uh, swirling. What are we talking about? The uh, Kuz Benghazi over here? Like what's <laughs> going on down there that we don't know about? Right. I don't know. All I When I learned about tampons, what I learned is you can swim with them. You can go horseback riding with them. You'll still be a virgin. You can't push them too far. What about, attract, what about attracting sharks? Oh, you no. Know, that one I have never been afraid well, that of. That is true. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Well, you know, they say they can smell a drop of blood <laughs> that's mixed in with, like, you know, Shamu's tank. But... I like All how right. but what do we need to know? Like, well, what do we need to go to Kotex.com to figure out the the cycle of the cycle of misinformation? What's going on? Well, does it smell? Why do we need? <laughs> that, I don't like. That was my least favorite uh, of okay. the uh, girls. How much information do we need? I feel like we we're getting way too much information. I I know way more than I need to know about almost everything. Do you think the double entendre of the breaking the cycle yes. was intended? Yes. yes. Oh, you do. Okay. I thought yeah. that was a poorly chosen word. It, it, no, it, I'm it's sure. not. It doesn't help. I mean, it's it's not. It doesn't. Even if it's on purpose, it's a poor decision. Either way, I guess it's better than the chicks tagging the side of the uh, brick facade. Yeah. I mean, I guess what what like they're trying to make Kotex a destination for people who have questions about their periods. Yeah. All and right. I, I don't know. People already know. All right, let me ask you guys this. There's a new movie out. I don't know, some some thriller, some some sexy thriller I've been seeing billboards for. But it's it's Tyler Perry. Ooh. Um, let me ask this. From Tyler Perry, has he caught up from the mind of M. Night Shyamalan? <laughs> Is he the black M. Night Shyamalan? And when you see a movie, of course, if it says from the mind of M. Night Shyamalan, it's now diminishing returns, right? You're less likely to see that movie. Yeah. I was hoping it was from someone else's mind. Right. And so when you see from, like, you know, it's slow movie season. I might go to a movie. This thing looks sexy from the billboards. But I see from the mind of Tyler Perry or from Tyler Perry, I know it's a piece of shit because he's a hack and a horrible writer. I told the story where I saw the trailer for Devil in, in the movies. And as soon as from the mind of M. Night Shyamalan came up, there was audible laughter in the theater. I think... This is from, yeah, Tyler Perry. I think he still has an audience somewhere. I don't think M. Night, I think they've abandoned him. I think it's- But he's uh, catching up, right? Oh, you know what? The, the proof is, Anderson was just telling me that there's a new M. Night Shyamalan movie coming out. His name, nowhere to be found on the posters, nobody found on the trailers. It, you would never know it was him. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told. I have not seen that yet, but I've been told they're distancing themselves from M. Night. Mm. Whereas, obviously, Tyler still, his name still 
mm-hmm. warrants being put on the poster. Yeah, but he's putting it on there. Probably. I All imagine right. there are people like, Re- you really, really? <laughs> you don't want to let the story speak for itself? Do you want me to see this? Uh, it's going to be horrible. He's a horrible, horrible writer. I was thinking about, and this mm. is similar, that experience where you're listening to a song and you think, oh, I kind of like this song. I hope it's not by a band I don't like. Yeah. Isn't that a weird thing? It's I was called thinking getting you... nickelbacked. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it was getting collective sold. Oh, for me, it was yeah. getting trained. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. I heard a train go. song. This is a great song. But, like, oh, fuck, it's train. But why is that? Because if you like it, you should just be like, oh, I like this song. Yeah. What is that? I don't know, but we do it with teams. We do it with politics. We do it with bands. You just decide this shouldn't be good. But again, if it's from the mind of Tyler Perry and it's got to do with Kotex and it's sung by Nickelback, I will definitely, definitely see it. All right. Let's see. We're going to do some made-up movie. Speaking of commercials, I saw... One that pissed me off as a uh, taxpayer. The first one, the Kotex one, pissed me off as a woman. This one. Thank you. We appreciate that. Angered me as a taxpayer. There's a uh, Latin-esque woman sitting in a modest kitchen. Uh, uh, Latin-esque? Not quite Latin. Uh, Getting there. Can't tell what anyone is anymore, but uh, it says uh, La La Cochina on the board, so... She is uh, going to explain uh, about a new, a new program and a new, a, a new store. Let's hear what she's got. As a busy mom, shopping at a grocery store with my food vouchers is a hassle. That's why I shop at Mother's Nutritional Center. I simply present my food vouchers to their friendly staff, and they do the shopping for me. All right, hold on a I... second. <laughs> How busy are you, Mom? Where's Dad? They do the shopping for you. Um... These are food stamps, not she food vouchers. She has a really nice house and a really nice coffee maker for food vouchers. Yes, but she's on food stamps, and she goes to a place where they do the shopping for. After five seconds, I'm kind of okay with this because this prevents people from using the food stamps, right? They're being given what they need for their kids or for their families. No, they are give them a list of what they need. Oh, yeah. I thought they literally handed their food vouchers and they got things. No, it's no. nothing but Captain oh, Crunch. They're doing the shopping. Oh, my God. And churros, the breakfast cereal. All right, so she hands then she hands the nice, friendly staff her list. Well, wait a minute. Who? You know what? Who's going to make that list out for her? I mean, that's a calorie burner. I should be making that out. Yeah. Anyway, it's unfair well, that she has to make she out has her own more shopping time list. To, to scratch lotto tickets. <laughs> that's right. So here she goes. Vouchers to their friendly staff, and they do the shopping for me. I love that Mother's Nutritional Center has a large selection of quality fresh fruits and vegetables at super low prices. Plus, they always carry my groceries to my car. Mother's Nutritional Center saves me valuable time All right. with my food voucher the shopping. The point is, is Mother's she's on the food stamps. She ain't. She don't have the time to shop, and they bring the shit out to the car. Baby, we are this close to eating it and shitting it out for you because that's all that's left in this exchange. I have a pertinent question. Yes. What channels are you watching? <laughs> High <laughs> class channels. Yeah. That's right. Are you watching the Oprah like network? Or what? Where do they run these commercials? He's the watching next, in the daytime. The next commercial was, uh, so you want to lease some rims. <laughs> Why shouldn't you be rolling on 28s? Um, so I'm just, the idea that there is now an industry that has popped up around food yeah. stamps and the notion that we have to make things easier for busy moms that are ba- here's what food stamps are i pay for you and your kids to eat and if i don't someone else does or we all collectively do um i'm fine with that concept when you've had an industrial accident or there's a problem or you know shit happens in life i understand that but let's not make this a way of life and i like you burning some calories at the supermarket not waiting around for someone else and they bring it out to the car that's nice it's awesome by the way in that shot there were no bags it was just groceries in the in the the, the cart yes yeah Wonder about Did you that. notice that there were no yeah. there were no bags. Whenever mm-hmm. I go grocery shopping, they offer to help me to my car. Do they, they offer you as well? They offer everyone. Or I they, don't know. Yes. I never ever ever take them up on it. Mm. Have you ever seen anyone take them up on it? It feels it's it's weird because yeah, it's right. <laughs> there's there's just bananas and oranges <laughs> and and apples just running free <laughs> and a pineapple. <laughs> Uh, she's like uh, Carmen Miranda over here. She's going to go home and make a hat. She's on her way to a tennis court. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, All right. You know why you don't, you know why you would rather schlep 
your stuff to your own car? Why you would? I don't want to talk to that person. Uncomfortable, weird conversation. Not sure. You know, there's that little thing where you do that sort of side mouth, thanks, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't even give full eye contact. There's a weird car mumble. It's it's up it's up here. It's up it's up it's the it's the it's still silver Lexus. It's up yeah, it's up yeah. Okay. And then there's some talk. Yeah, just bring it around. Then there's a little small talk about what's in the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, <laughs> the kids. <laughs> well, kids. I, I would do the you thing of the like, kids. do you have to, do you, are yeah. you, like, do you get off work soon or are you work a long time? And then I worry that I sound like I'm propositioning him. But Weird. I'm really just trying to make small talk right. about his experience as a person who works at the store. Then you do this one. I know you're not allowed to accept tips, right? Oh my God! <laughs> they, they surprisingly they always are. No, they no, tell I you they are. I bagged groceries for two years in high school. That was my high school job, mm-hmm. and uh, we were not allowed to accept tips. No. You know, it was a small like chain of like four stores, and the old mm. man who was still owned it for decades uh-huh. didn't want us taking tips. We uh-huh. had to wear a tie and How everything. How much money did you leave on the table, Brian? Well, I mean, for a high school kid, that's a lot of money to leave on the table. Yeah, I just thought yeah, it probably f- wasn't very much. But I talked to a friend of mine who uh, I won't name because it's humiliating, <laughs> but sort of in- industrious. Um, he said he would work for a market. He would always bring the stuff out, and they would throw like a case of beer on the. On oh, the, I that's don't know. Nice. It's sort of like uh, Daddy's drip tray. I'm thinking of like Grandma's attic. They have up above the U-Hauls, the extra space up above the top of the U-Haul. Underneath the shopping cart should be called the uh, Grandpa's drip pan. It's that weird thing underneath there that you put a case of dog food or something or coal down low. Or something, yeah. And or sacks of coal, right. yeah, sacks of bar, Charcoal, you know, briquettes yeah. and stuff like that. So they'd slide in a case of wine coolers or something. Then they'd push it out to the car, unload everything, and then stash the wine coolers. And then that weekend, go to parties and sell the wine coolers. Smart. So on one hand, the person's a thief. On the other hand, you want them working for you. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? You know right. that that feeling. Anyway. Uh, so yes, you can, uh, have someone do all the shopping they want for you with your food vouchers, which are called food stamps. And I'd like them brought back to food stamps because there's a shame involved with that. All right. Uh, let's see. Made up movie. Want to do a little made up movie? Yeah. According to an ancient Mayan prophecy in the year 2012, a hero would rise to turn your movie titles into blockbusters. Glad it's not me. That hero is Adam Carolla. Boy, that could be me. And this is Made Up Movie. Haven't updated the intro yet for 2013. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll work it out. All right, you guys got anything uh, up there? Let's see. You got a line you want to talk to, Allison, Brian, feeling anything? I can do uh, line three. Line three. Let's talk to Julia. Julia, what's your made-up movie title? (laughs) Ace Man. Julia from New Orleans. (laughs) Hello. Well, this is actually for Allison. Uh, My made-up movie is March Sadness. You can't tell (laughs) which one of us can make up your movie. Brian, don't tell me what movies I can't Brian make up. Brian picked March Sadness, oh. and Alice- but thank you so much for the thought. I can't, I can't accept it. Allison will jump in. But we'll all gang back yeah, on this one, right? Go ahead. March Sadness. Okay, this is a uh, sports comedy. This mm. is a uh, a point shaving sports comedy. Mm-hmm. A coach gets his team, a small college team, into the NCAA tournament, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and. Uh, he needs money, so he, he, he shaves points uh, for some gamblers, some gangsters. Mm-hmm. He shaves some points. Now, is it how old are we going? Oh, this is modern day. Yeah, but how old's the coach? I'm oh. casting now. Well, we, what's his motivation? Is he trying to get his son out of something? Is he trying to get his ne'er do well daughter out of something? Is, he, I, is it I dark? Like, is he trying to import I, a mistress? I, I like the idea of uh, the mob has like kidnapped somebody, and while he's having a Cinderella season. They need points <laughs> shaved right. in order to win, you know, in order to get the kid back. And right. if it goes to the authorities, the kid's going to get it. And he's trying to tank the, the game by putting in his worst possible lineup. Like, why are you benching that guy? He's your best player. Ah, to give, you know, the other right. guy some time. Mm-hmm. And much to his surprise, the team starts winning by even more. Right. They roll through the tournament. Jake Gyllenhaal. Is the coach? No. He's a he's <laughs> JC transfer. Okay, he's a 35-year-old JC transfer? That's why I said JC. Okay, I got you. I got you. He's going to shave. He's a JC he's been transfer. He's, he's been overseas. He's been kicking around. He's been he's been in a JC overseas. Oh, they do it. They do JC a little bit differently over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's been riding the pine the whole year, mm-hmm. 
and uh, he's motivated. Yep. And so he whips the new troops, he even has like secret practices at night for the new starting <laughs> five and everything. And now the coach is getting pissed because they keep winning. Yeah. He's like the king of the bench warmers. Like he's like the B squad, you know, mm-hmm. captain. And like mm-hmm. now he's thrust into this mm-hmm. leadership role. Mm-hmm. And of course, they tear through the Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. Now, the coach should be Whoopi Goldberg as a dude. <laughs> yes. Because I do feel like Whoopi's yes. more dude than chick at this point anyway. You very much so. yeah. Might as well just go that extra 10% right, right. and become full dude. And then she'll have a shot at an Oscar. Again. Another, Again. another one, yeah. Uh-huh. Because when you play, you know, mm-hmm. cross-gender. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, what happens is they're tanking the last game mm-hmm. because they have to, but the daughter that was kidnapped right. breaks free shows up at the top, you know, with with four minutes left and then down by nine points, shows up at the top of the arena. Whoopi, who's a dude, <laughs> sees the daughter, realize, you know, ha- you know, they're still doing that thing where she's removing the duct tape from her wrists and her right. mouth and stuff. Sees she made it. She has taken the gag off. She still has the gag in her mouth right. from being kidnapped. Yes, uh-huh, that's how it works. And it gathers everyone around and says, now we can win this thing, but realizes Leave Jake's squad in. Yeah. They're the one who brought us to the dance. It's powerful. <laughs> That's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> hey, you're, are you one of those Cajun queens from New Orleans, or are you just regular from New Orleans? <laughs> I'm just a regular. I'm a, I'm a transplant. Mm-hmm. How's it going over there? It's good. We just finished a huge Mar- or, um, St. Patrick's Day celebration. Oh, really? Yeah. How's it, uh, where are you living? Is everything back up? You seen uh, Sean Penn in a shotgun with a shovel, or what? what's going on? Everything's a little, is a little crazy all the time. But, yeah, it's good down here. You should come visit. The cops don't care about anything. No, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I, it, was, it was the greatest. It's, it's when I realized L.A. was a police state. And when I say police state, what I mean is literally how far, freaked out and frightened are you of cops in LA? Like very. Yes. Everyone in LA is freaked out by cops, right? Now, um, you're supposed to be freaked out by cops if you're a criminal, but if you pay fucking taxes like we do and you're not a criminal, then you're not supposed to be freaked out by cops. Like I was driving back from the desert with my rape dar detector thankfully in place the other day but i was driving and i looked at all i do is i drive and i stare in my rear view mirror and i looked in my rear view mirror and i saw a couple hundred yards behind me what looked like the front of a chip car and i was like oh shit oh shit what do we got here oh shit what do we got i'm going 77 you know what shit what do we got here and i realized all i do is drive around looking for cops and then when i see one or one gets behind me it's like oh shit oh shit and the reality is is for the non-criminal element of this society, the ones who pay for the cops, the one who pay for the cruisers and pay for their equipment and uniforms, we should be happy to see cops because right. we're not drug dealers, we're not gangbangers, yet we're all scared shitless of them. That's in Los Angeles. Well, why is that? Because they're colossal assholes. They're fucking assholes who intimidate everyone around them and they act like they run. See... There's a big problem. All right, hold on. I'm pissed. Whether it be the mayor, the governor, lieutenant governor, whether it be the city council, whether it be the cops, you guys are confused. You think because you make some rules and because you enforce some rules, you own this city. You don't own this fucking city. We own this city. We pay for this city. It's our city. We either pay you or elect you and pay you to help run the city. It's be like if your gardener thought your house was his house. Like, hey, man, you pay me. I got free reign of this lawn, and I don't appreciate you and your dog making a number two. And I said (laughs) you. That's right. But, I mean, your maid and your gardener do not own your house or your right, ground. They're supposed to work for us. They fucking work for us. LAPD, you work for us. City council, mayor, you work for us. So we're not supposed to be freaked out by you. You're supposed to be trying to please us. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like the LAPD is ever trying to please anyone who no, lives in never, this fucking ever. city. And when you go to other cities, you become acutely aware of this. 
because when I was in New Orleans, as I've said before, Jimmy and I were taking some just semi-gay tour of New Orleans <laughs> when we were in there shooting a man show bit, and we were in the van, and the guy was taking us around the city, showing us the old cemeteries and the old historic historical districts and all that kind of stuff. And we're just driving down the highway, and because I'm from L.A., I saw we're coming up on a cop car. I, we're just sweeping around this highway, and we're coming up on a cop car, and the speed limit's 35, we're in the city, and we're going 44, and I just go to the guy, cop, cop, cop. Cop, 11 o'clock, cop. I'm, you know, because I'm driving around the fucking head on a swivel because I'm from Los Angeles constantly looking for the guys I pay who then try to fucking rape me with their chicken shit bullshit tickets. So I said, cop, 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 here we go, cop on the left. And the guy didn't slow down. He didn't hit the brake. He didn't do anything. You, you tell anyone who drives in L.A. or who's on the highway, cop, you know, and they just start slowing down and looking around and getting all freaky. We're not, we're not, there's not a kilo of of coke in the trunk there's no hookers there's no anything no drug paraphernalia we're not doing anything i'm fully insured and it's like no 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 no, cop cop slow down so i yelled at the guy cop cop slow down and he just kept going and i was like cop, cop here we go and i go he just kept driving and then we blew past the cop we blew past the cop on the highway and i said are you fucking nuts man you're gonna get a ticket you just blew past the cop and he goes he's got bigger fish to fry than me and i thought wow what a crazy, refreshing notion. Here's a guy, licensed, insured, drives a tour bus, and he's not scared of the cops in the city where he pays their salaries? What kind of utopia must this be? He's laughing. You L.A. guys are all the same. <laughs> yes, we're all scared shitless of the cops. All right, let's see. Uh, Allison, anything you yeah, like? Yeah, let's go line one. Line Jason. one. Jason, what do you got for us? Ace man, how you doing? Just, uh, Connecticut, up baby. Green here. What's that? I just finished up a bottle of man green here. Sweet. And, uh, I got a uh, a name for you. I got a little bit of a story I'm thinking of, but I'd like to hear your take on it. So we'll do the story. Uh, you give us the name. Fair enough. The name right. is Melting Point. Thank you. I feel like he's speaking well for someone who just drank a bottle of Mangria. Yeah. I'm it, ma there. it makes you smarter and it gives you girth. Okay. Now I'm sure. going to need some help from you guys mm -hmm. on um, plot and casting, but in general, uh -huh. this is Other than that. a frothy rom-com for women of a certain age. Ah. It's Meg Ryan, mm -hmm. and she's in perimenopause, so mm -hmm. it's hot. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, not yeah, only that, yeah. she's opened up a hot yoga studio. Diane Keaton is the manager. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, and by the way, she used to be an architect. Mm. So you She's got that streak going yeah. to her, yeah. But here's the thing. Queen Latifah is the sassy plus size yoga instructor. Yes, who's like surprisingly limber despite her mask. Yeah, yeah but it's funny because we always catch her eating like church's fried chicken out by the mm. dump in her car yes. like dur during her lunch break, you know, and I and, and But if she sees one of her Yogalinis, she yeah. throws it out the window. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Okay, but get this. Mm. So everything's going great for this new hot yoga place in town, mm. but then they get word that across the, well, nearby, mm -hmm. possibly right across the street, unless that's two on the nose, mm. another hot yoga place is opening up. Ah. This one is run by Penelope Cruz. Oh. And so they have a bitter rivalry because, right. you know, Meg Ryan is sort of, she's sweaty right. and frizzy and mm -hmm. it's the downward curve mm -hmm. for her. And then Penelope Cruz is a hot, young, uh -huh. hot-blooded thing. Yeah, so there, hot. now there needs but, to be a love interest Yes, in it's here. Adrian Grenier playing Penelope Cruz's younger brother. He's... In the movie, he's going to be much younger, even mm -hmm. though it's like he's not that much younger. Uh huh. Now From he, Entourage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, he and Meg Ryan. I mean, mm -hmm. at the beginning, they hate each other. They always do. Of course. Do. Uh huh. Well, they're both doing hot yoga, but you know, each one thinks the other one is doing it wrong. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you have it too hot. Mm -hmm. You have it too um. You, all the wrong Too much music. Hum humidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've stripped out the Eastern philosophy from all of it. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just about crass commercialism mm -hmm. and et cetera. And you just care about selling your yeah. yoga pants in the gift yeah. shop. And, but and, that, and, and, and Adrian Grenier's character is named Matt. So there's a big funny thing. We call him Yoga Matt. <laughs> yes. And it's like always a big joke. So yeah, so funny. And everyone laughs all the time. I've heard that one before, guys. Yeah. Well, then one day, 
Meg Ryan stomps mm-hmm. over there to finally have it out with them and to mm-hmm. say that this will not do. This town is not big enough for two hot yoga studios. Mm-hmm. And she has uh, been practicing yoga wrong. And she has all of a sudden she's like, oh, oh, and she grabs her back. Mm-hmm. She also has osteoporosis. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then the only person who can help her is Adri- is Yoga Matt. And he yeah. comes over, and she's like, she doesn't want to be I'm touched by him. Joke. It's yeah. really good, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Uh, yeah. She doesn't want to be touched by him yeah. at first, but then, you know, she allows him to put his healing hands on her, uh-huh. and one thing leads to another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Oh, all right. Ooh. So the the May December relationship. Yeah. Co- springs forward. Yes, Brian. No, go ahead. Um, I got an idea on casting, but we'll do it afterwards. No, I want to hear, hear what you got. The Meg Ryan thing made me think we could do some stunt casting where one, the older yoga studio is sort of like the uh, rom-com stars of yesteryear or the ones who've had their day and come and gone, sort of mm-hmm. like Kate Hudson and Meg Ryan and sort of the stars who were kind of over. Mm-hmm. And the new yoga studio can maybe be populated with actresses. Oh, yeah, like Taylor Swift. Yes, the actresses of today. But it's like, hey, don't get too comfortable. You'll end up just be like Be careful with your, pitch, with your pitch to Kate Hudson's agent. <laughs> Which which do you want? From, you want from the young things studio, I hate right? about you. You know what? Maybe the term "fucked out" was was Marty was probably in hindsight being twenty twenty five. That's not what I meant. I meant yeah. seasoned, <laughs> right? Seasoned actor, veteran, veteran, veteran. We're looking for veteran, veteran. Yeah, it's a delicate pitch. Yeah, I hope "fucked out" was used. It uh, with take, love. It was taken the spirit in which it was intended. All due respect. Yeah. So uh, so he puts his healing hands. Yoga on, Matt does. Yoga on her. Matt. And then, yeah, and she, you So know, they start having a relationship. Yeah. But now they can't let anyone find out about no, this. No, because it's like bitter rivals. Right. So there's a lot. So every time they're spot, like at some point they get spotted together. Yeah, this is yeah. music. It's they like get, a real French farce with them running in and out. They get spotted together at a, at a diner and, and, and she does the, he does the move where he goes, duck! And she ducks down. And then he's just sitting there, and you can see her sort of on a table, and then they cut to the old person who sees her under the table yeah. looking at him going, wow, oh what's going on under there? And also someone sees him with, you know, two meals. Uh-huh. And he's just like, I'm just hungry. Carb loading. Just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Who are you eating with? Nobody. I just get, yeah, uh, just that's, a- that's for Elijah. Yeah. Yeah. Like I like coffee and tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. So you're Jewish? Mm-hmm. Thinking about it. At the end, they have to uh I'm trying to think. Now have they're a gonna... dance off. <laughs> I think there has to be a limbo contest. Oh. And this is where Perfect. David Allen Greer reprises his gay character from In Living Color, yes. the movie critic. Because there's a big, they do one of those things in movies that don't exist where they go, the big limbo competition has come to town. Like where you think to yourself, like, what? There's not. And that's it. And Uh it's. And And because it's a test of of who is teaching yoga better. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. Limbo should be called limber. It should. Write that down. Somebody write that down. I'll write it down. All right. Jason. (laughs) <laughs> Jason It's a hit Now yes, I want to Jason what direction Did you want to go with this When you originally conceived Of the <sighs> title Melting well, Point I mean I was kind of Going in the direction Of a Zamboni driver At the local rink In South Jersey Who was kind of Hiding bodies for the mob mm. and, and then like Sort of as you know, the season ended And the mm-hmm. mob wasn't Coming to pick those bodies up He kind of had to face The decision Mm-hmm Mm-hmm. What he's gonna do? Yeah, semi autobiographical. We've already, we've already, we've already secured <laughs> financing and cast half this project. So right, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> and and again, unless you can work in a character named Yoga Matt, it's just not gonna go because I'm thoroughly in love with that. Right, it's a whole movie written around a joke. That's right. That's uh, like uh, just about every uh, yeah. Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy <laughs> movie is. All right, do we have an outro? We sure do. Let's play it. Yeah. Adam Carolla will return in Made Up Movie Part Two. I'll tell you when we uh, when we get together and noodle on this session, we'll have a noodle session. Okay. And we'll talk about laying pipe. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what we do when we have noodle when we sessions. Noodle? John Sebastiani is coming in here. He's an entrepreneur. He's a veteran winemaker, and now he's making delectable jerky. We'll talk to him about business next. for new
Nicaraguan name that movie with Adam's buddy Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. All the gin joints, in all the town, in all the world, she walks in the mine. If you said Casablanca, of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks in the mine. You're correct. Now, back to the show. Now that one you guys all knew, right? I did, actually. You did, honestly. John Sebastiani is uh, here. He's uh, making himself some custom jerky. He's made wines. Family's made wine for over 100 years. That's right. How did it all get started? The wine part, my great-grandfather, Sam Welly, started a winery called Sebastiani Vineyards in the uh, late 1800s in Sonoma. Here's what I can't figure out about that business. When they start talking about the soil and what it takes and the grapes and the work, like you would look at a bottle of wine when it was done and go, that should be $1,300, but it's $9. <laughs> and you think of all the aging, all the work, all the science that went into it, all the, you know, you know just the science behind it. How do they make money? Many don't. I think many wineries don't. It's it's become a, a hobby for for most wineries. But uh, you know, I think when you're when you're looking at the larger wineries that are doing, say, over a million cases of wine, there's so much mechanical uh, work that's going into the production that the the manual labor is reduced. But in Sonoma and Napa, where we are, it's a passion of love, much like your project. It's ah uh, uh, yes, my beautiful mangria. mangria. Yes. Did you taste the red and the white? I did not taste the white, Ooh, but we I'll bought some red sample. and we tasted the red and we uh, we in our Crave office paired it with some jerky. We Well, I uh, tell us which ones cuz I got your jerky and uh, it was it was jerky's the one food that uh, it, it 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 there's no there's no such thing as the the half eaten jerky pouch that gets tossed out. Um John, I'm, I'm assuming it was John, sent us a box of this stuff a few weeks ago. It was immediately cleaned out by all the lazy piranhas. If there was such a thing as a... Like know, a stoned piranha. Like a lethargic piranha. <laughs> yeah. Like if Doug Benson was a piranha. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, was, it was eaten. It was consumed immediately. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean the 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 jerkies that we thought were good with the mangria because the mangria had a high alcohol as well as it had a three percent sugar. It's a kind of a sweeter, maybe after dinner wine. It went really good with the or spicier. instead of dinner or instead of hey, that's you right. Know, mm -hmm. Back to the island. You mm -hmm. need jerky and wine, <laughs> and, that's and you're right. good. Uh, so we have a couple of our products that crave is are spicy. We have a garlic chili, which is really spicy. And if you know your mouth gets a little hot, a little mangria would would pair nicely with it. How do you start a business that has to do with dried cow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, is eternal question. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of rules. I don't know what the jerky rules are. I feel like there's a lot of wine related rules yeah, and places you can't ship it and labels. JTF. That's right. From that standpoint, <laughs> the jerky business is wonderful. There are no state regulations that we have to comply with to ship it across state lines. So I feel like you can almost make your own and open a stand by the side of the freeway and they pretty much leave you alone. You could. And you can, I don't know. It's, it's There's a weird, there's no fear factor with jerky. Right. People would send us like homemade jerky to Loveline, like wrapped in foil. Like, I made this myself. It's made of deer and truck bumper and drew and i would just eat it yeah. it's the opposite Did you like of sushi it? yeah it's the opposite of sushi I, I there's something about removing a, a large amount of moisture that makes it like ah oh, what could happen what yeah. could happen here yeah i don't know <laughs> maybe you could tell us if that's a well, good policy well i think that so much jerky out there is just crap i mean it yes. tastes like shoe leather and they put a little salt on it and they call it jerky. We're, and it's, it's got such a bad name that what we're trying to do is actually give it a little bit of respect. Who, who, what nations are big jerky consumers? Boy, that's that's good trivia. Do you guys ship? Do you guys ship a lot to some we, place that would well, surprise you know, us? I, I, actually, the governments are quite strict on shipping jerky across. So, so like mad cow disease prevents us mm. from shipping into mm -hmm. Asian countries. We do ship into Canada. We can ship into England. But 
most other countries, it's hard for us to direct ship. But within the states, it's obviously very easy. You guys to ship. all beef? You get any buffalo? No, they do we, any we're, moose we're testing or with in some, with some buffalo, but we do turkey and we do pork. Mm-hmm. We're oh, testing pork jerky. Yeah, yeah. We have one right here: black cherry barbecue pork. I like a little hit off that. If you don't I mean, mind. this please. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole thesis here is is that mm-hmm. you can actually bite into this jerky. You can actually. Chew it. Here's, it's how, not here's how good this break must have been. I never even knew it was in the studio. It was that, it it, snatched it was, up that fast. Yes, it was consumed very quickly. Would you like a taste ball, Brian? Yeah. I uh, love jerky, man. I I I'm hard on jerky, though, so mm. let's give it a shot. Mm. Well, let, let, let's hear your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should run on that platform. <laughs> hard on jerky. You know, as far yeah. as tough crime goes, yeah. I'm not, not so tough on it. But <laughs> <Right>. jerky, <laughs> look out. It almost tastes like steak. Yeah, I will. Um, That's a good compliment. I will uh, say you've not had any jerky from a convenience store that tastes anything close to this. And actually, in this like sort of all protein world we're getting into now, I'm guessing there's a lot of you know. I was thinking about it. If you meant like like I go out to breakfast with my friends and no one orders toast anymore because yeah. they just go, I, I don't want to get fat. I, I can't eat anymore. And they're ordering bacon and they're ordering cheese omelets and then it's hold the toast, hold the toast, hold the toast. I don't know if bakery, you think bakeries are suffering? Do you think restaurants? This is a great, this, this is a great thing for the restaurant because they don't deduct 89 cents. It's just everything comes with four pieces of toast and now everyone goes, hold the toast. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you're you're right. I mean, jerky at this point is low in carbohydrates, it's low in fat, it's low in calories, but high in protein. I mean, the fact is, it's a great healthy snack, and I think a lot of people, especially down here in LA, you know, a lot of people are reaching for the protein as a great way to lose a little bit, lose weight, and you know, get in shape. So, what do you? What's your business? You get it into stores, you do it online. So we're in both. You know, we launched the company little over two years ago, and we're in about 12,000 stores from coast to coast. So in L.A., we're in Gelson's and Bristol Farms and Bonds and Pavilions. Those Devmo. Those <laughs> it's it's you know. upscale jerky. We're, yeah, we do, we're not selling it to sea stores. This is not your typical gas station jerky. This is uh, the real deal. It's all U.S. meat. It's not importing the beef from, you know, South America. You know, if you pick up a bag of some of the typical jerky that you would find in a convenience store, it would say the beef, beef contained herein may come from right. one of the following countries, and they list three, four different countries. And uh, family, still making wine? Yeah, we've most of the family wineries have been sold. Sebastian Vineyards has been sold. Some of the larger wineries that we had in the Valley were sold. But all of us, uh, in one way or another, are still in the business. I still grow Syrah and Pinot Grigio, make uh, about 1,000 cases. Let me so say still- this about wine. Um, I, I feel I was into uh, Pinot Noir, or Pinot Noir, however you say it, uh, for it depends on how drunk you are. Yeah, uh, for like the last mm, eight years, and now everyone's drinking the shit out of that. Yeah, and I feel like I was into Green Day in like 1992, <laughs> and now I have to keep getting super defensive when I order. Like, ah, oh, I'm old school with this. I mean, I'm not jumping on the, the Pinot bandwagon here. I was on. I was steering this fucking wagon years ago, but it tasted so good to me that I thought, who the hell else would get? Why would you want anything else? And now. Is it amongst the best sellers now? I think Pinot, I mean, Cabernet is still amongst, I think it's, the, it's still the king red wine. Uh, Pinot is, is so delicate and it's so difficult to make good mm-hmm. that when it's made great, that's, you know, what people reach for. Merlot's seeing a big resurgence, uh, you know, Zinfandel, lots of Italian wines, lots of wines coming in from out of the country. But here. California is now winning all the awards and all that, right? I mean, it used to be sort of a joke if something wasn't from parts of Europe, France, that kind of stuff. California wines, I mean, many years ago. Yeah. Now it's... N- now it's... Are we number one? No. I mean, I think, you know, as a, as a wine-producing nation, I think we're number one. But, I mean, there's unbelievable wines coming out of New Zealand and Australia now and Chile and yeah, I heard you talking about Colombia. I mean, out of Oregon. I mean, there's some fantastic wines. And it's, up in- it's so crazy when you talk to the guys because they're like, this soil has a high zinc content, so it's much better for this grape than it yeah. is for that oh, yeah. grape. And then the the coast, it's cool in the morning, and then it warms up, and you need the wind. It's like it's such a crazy science. You just realize you just can't do it 
on 99.9% of the Earth's surface is no good for growing this delicate thing. But that's why it's so mind-boggling to me that it's not. And then everything gets gets picked by hand. And it's like, how many of those grapes is it? Does it? How many bushels does it take to get one bottle? And then the whole just just staring at the bottle. I go, this thing should be eight bucks, just an empty bottle. The cork should be another alone. three yeah, bucks. You guys right. are lucky. I'm not in charge. <laughs> I'd be right. Count my blessings y'all. every day. Yeah, there'd be no. There'd be uh, eleven buck Chuck would be as cheap as uh, <laughs> as cheap as you could go. All right, John, you want to uh, hang out and uh, crack wise and uh, jump in on the news with us? Yes. How, uh, by the way, uh, sorry, uh, Columbia University master's degree. That sounds pretty good. Um, How's that go? What do you know? (laughs) I want to know what you know. (laughs) Give me a subject. Well, what what would you major in? Uh, I got my MBA at Columbia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I've been really interested in the business of business lately, and I now understand. I used to think that all business guys were just kind of jack offs because yeah. th- I, now that now it's uh, now it's down to half. But <laughs> <laughs> no, because they didn't have a passion. But now I realize their passion is business, like the notion of taking a wine or a jerky or mangria or something or or a song or a or a tripod for a camera or just headphones or just gla- frames for your glasses. We could be here all night. Yeah, we yeah. could be here all night. Laminate. <laughs> yeah. Laminate <laughs> the air that we breathe. No, just the idea that you can take a coffee mug or a stand that holds and the paper and, on the stand. And, and the, take a product and go, how do I get this prototype, this thing that there's one of on the planet? into every other household and not only in the United States, but America, or how do I get this beverage or this jerky into the mouth of everybody? It just, it becomes a cool, interesting process that transcends whatever the product is. And my, my sense is always, oh, that's just chance, but it's so much more than chance, right? I think so. I mean, it's, you know, the jerky space was, I mean, I'm a jerky lover, Mm -hmm. but when we looked at the space, I it love was there's a, a jerky space. Where are your waiters four, when you go into the jerky it's space? It's a $4 billion space. So It I mean, is? In the U.S., there's $4 billion worth of jerky sold each year. And then you look at, okay, there's four companies, the stuff that you see in a gas station that controls 80% of that space. Mm-hmm. So what we're trying to do is we're going to go in and disrupt the space, and we're going directly after those four companies. And we're doing it better with better product, better meats better presentation, better packaging, yeah, and it's working. I mean, in three years, we're already achieving major, you know. I'll tell you the problem you're up against. I've had this on many a road trip big where jerky. I go, yeah, <laughs> you got to go up against big jerk. <laughs> so, and they got their fucking jerky lobbyists, and they're all, oh, they, uh, all yeah, the they, senators are bought and sold and put in their <laughs> pemmican pouch. They're so, cured and hung. <laughs> and dried. Salted. Yeah, so, no, I've had this happen a million times where I've like been on a road trip and I've gone, all right, who's got the 7-Eleven jerky? And somebody whips it out and then I grab the handful and I'm driving and I put it in my mouth and I'm like, well, this is fucking horrible. Mm-hmm. This tastes like ass. It's and it's going to be in my mouth for another two and a half super hours. Super salty and dry. And then I do that. And then I take a sip off my water bottle. And then two minutes later I go, let me have another hit off that. Because even though it tastes like shit, we will eat it. That's the problem. And you're here to say you no longer have to well, eat shitty jerky. <laughs> no longer have to eat that shit. Absolutely. And the next time you're feeling like today I'm going to snack just a little bit healthier. And mm-hmm. instead of buying that Lara bar or Cliff bar or potato chips or pretzels, mm-hmm. reach for jerky because there's less calories, less carbohydrates, mm-hmm. less sugar than those products. And that's what we're up against is unfortunately most people think jerky of that crap that you just talked about at 7-Eleven. Right. We're Leave, leave plenty behind because I what got a real trip you, coming up. What made you want, and sorry if you already answered this, but what made you want to get into jerky? Was it the business part of it or was it a passion for jerky? I, I think, I mean, twofold. I mean, certainly the the business opportunity was first and foremost. And, and the fact that I loved it and that coming from the wine country with a love and a passion for food and wine, it was bringing, you know, flavors to a stale category, bringing, you know, we have basil citrus turkey. You got to fill the jerky space, baby. (laughs) I mean, something different than teriyaki and that shit. All right. The the one that Adam and I are are eating is pork jerky. How common or not common is that? Because I've never had pork jerky before. It's pretty uncommon. I mean, it's out there, but that 
is going to really create a tender. I mean, it's, do you like it? It's like uh, a jerky yeah. flavor, a jerky version of ribs. It's black, Which I guess cherry, is the, yeah, the yeah, barbecue. The yeah, that's good. That's why I'm going for more of it. All right. <laughs> now on the bag, it says snout. <laughs> on the purple bag. It, it, huh? Snout? I'm, I'm reading the word snout. It's part oh, of oh, the design of Oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, because it's, you know, part of a pig. Oh, okay, snout. so it's just, okay. Yes. But, well, but there's not I'm, snout in there. No, I mean, but there's the jerky no space in is in my mouth now. <laughs> Um, well, let's keep the snout to a minimum. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Come right. on. All right, let's do some news. The news Rock and roll. With Allison Rosen. She read some news from her iPad. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's Allison. Allison. And when it's time to wrap it up, she'll sign it off with zip it cut. It's Allison. Allison. I have a, a technology related question first. When someone calls you and they don't leave a message, are you supposed to call them back or not? Because I always felt like if they don't leave a message, you're not supposed no. to call them back. But there, an article just came out saying that these days it is rude to leave a message and you're just, if you see the number, like like a, a voicemail message is actually a rude form of communication because mm. you're, you're, you're taking up the person's time when you could so much, so you could just text them or email them or they'll see their number, your, yeah, their number pop up and then you'll know to call them back. That's what I do. I just see their number and I call them back. You but do. There's a lot of butt dialing yeah. these days. And I always feel. Do you ever listen to your voicemails? No. Well, there we go. Uh, my my cell phone doesn't. I don't know if it works. I don't know how it is. I I somebody went to my computer the other day and said uh, you have thirty three hundred emails, and I was like, I guess. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how I, how any of this stuff works. I'm not interested in communication. I want to yell at people. Right. I don't want any. You don't want it coming at you from them. Right. Yeah. Communication implies a give and take. Huh? <laughs> I saw your mouth move, but I didn't hear anything. That's right. You're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I I don't I think if you don't leave a message, you don't call back. That means for whatever reason they were calling you wasn't important enough to tell you what the, why they called. You know my fun thing to do with everyone though is get your circle of friends not together just tell them individually you know you you butt dial me all the time i mean it's at least twice a week my phone rings and then it's you just talking on the other line obviously and if the person goes <laughs> i say a lot of stupid stuff don't listen to me i'm just a big kidder that means they talk shit about you all the time that's right yeah just do it with people and see what they say all right. just just for the you all you'll know it all in their eyes in the first tenth of a second when you go you dial me all the time because if it's a person you talk a lot of shit about right and they go you dial me all the time and you don't even know it that person will do one millisecond of facial change like and if it's a person with nothing on their mind and nothing on their plate and who speaks highly of you all the time they'll immediately just go so what you'll see nothing on their face but tell everyone in your community in your life tell them that they butt dial you and just look for that one tenth of a second when their face changes i feel like if we all do this next week we're all going to have zero friends (laughs) or maybe that's just me so tj lane an 18 year old who shot up the high school cafeteria in ohio Mm. in his school at chardon uh fucking fish sticks I know. He Is was he shooting people? Yeah, he shot. Oh. He, well, he shot three. <laughs> he didn't just shoot up the. I don't the, know. The concessions. There were people in the cafeteria. There were three deaths. Oh. There were three deaths. He was sentenced today. He wore a t-shirt that's. Well, he came in with uh, a blue dress shirt, and then he unbuttoned it in court to reveal a t-shirt that said "killer." And the prosecutor said that was similar to the one that he wore during the shooting. Mm-hmm. And here's the uh, even more chilling part. I believe I heard this on the radio, oh. uh, but you can tell us. But uh, in terms of, um, he, he's in custody, right? They didn't swing by his apartment and pick him up. Hey, we semi no, mass yeah, murder. We got you. Got to get you down to the courthouse. The guy was in in the van tooting on the mm-hmm. horn, or. No, apparently so, he had access to Haynes and Markers. Can't we do a quick little uh, check? Yeah, you know what I mean, you'd think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but we can't do anything right. Right. So, so he he's wearing a blue shirt and he takes the blue shirt off and underneath is a says T-shirt killer. that says "killer" on yeah. it, right? And at one point he swiveled around in his chair and turned to face his own family and those of the slain teenagers, and said, "Here we go." The hand that pulled the trigger that kills, sorry, the hand that pulled the trigger that killed your sons now masturbates to that memory. He should be working for Hallmark. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> 
you know, shooting up cafeterias. I know. He does have a way with words. All right. All right. Now, can't we kill people? Why don't we kill people? Let's kill people. You know what I and mean? And we could masturbate to it. This whole thing where they go, uh, yeah, people would do this thing where they go, uh, well, that would then make them as bad as us or us as bad as them. Um, not really. We had Nazis and then we killed them. And now we don't have so many Nazis. And that doesn't make us as bad as them. It makes us liberators and heroes yeah, when what you the kill hell? bad people. No one gets upset about the Nazis that got put to death. Hasn't anybody ever even seen a movie? In the movie, it starts with a bad guy, and he's hurting people, and he's shooting people. And at some point, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Clint Eastwood or Cla- John Claude Van Damme, I'm trapped in the 80s, uh, Vin Diesel shows up, mm. and at some point, he kills that person, and then we all walk out of the theater satisfied. That guy never gets locked up somewhere where he gets to butt fuck his roommate for the next 30 years and get free medical and dental. Ooh, Nick Cage in uh, Con Air. Yeah. He took out the bad guy, then got thrown in jail for it. That's right. It's a rare exception, rare exception. Yeah. Boy, uh, one of the students who yeah. was wounded, though, whose ear got nicked, said that this guy said it like a scared little boy and couldn't talk slow enough that anyone could understand him. Oh, but really? Still. Well, but we you still know, know what he said. He was probably one of those things he was uh, working on, like worst yes. guy ever for a best man speech. But it was probably one of those things where he'd been working it and working it and right. working it. And He's like the trigger that masturbates sun hand now. Right. He's got it all backwards. Fucked it all up. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just kill him. I was watching, uh, I don't know what, Fox News or something a few weeks ago. And it was like, we have an interview with Charles Manson from his cell. And I'm like the fuck are we still hearing from this guy for? Because you know what that means, that they went there and they're like, uh, Mr. Manson, can we mic you up? Yeah, and uh, the, the fact that he's just around to give an interview and that we talk about him and that, right. here's the deal. I agree with Charles Manson. <laughs> Manson <laughs> did what Manson did, and that was uh, 42 years ago or 43 43, 44 years ago. The the point is, at some point, my kids that were born between six and eight years ago, Mm, uh, my twins are going to know Charles Manson's name. They shouldn't know Charles Manson's name. They're not going to know Christy McNichol's name. Oh, that's a crime. I know. One of our greatest treasures. (laughs) National treasure. And national treasure. No one knows who she is. I know who she is. Thank you. Very well. And What? Huh, God damn John? It. No, Jesus Christ! Not even empty nest. He's hanging out. He must not have a television in that jerky space <laughs> of his. <laughs> There's no room for television in the jerky space. All right. So my kids, at some point, are going to have to ask me who uh, Charles Manson is, and let's just start killing people, can we? And and uh, as opposed to what he wants to be killed, it'd be a better life. He's never going to get out. At some point, he's going to find Jesus Christ, and he's going to write a nice letter to everyone, and then he'll marry, because there's always going to be some nutty yes, peroxide blonde who wants to fucking marry him, and then they're going to explain that you know how deeply in love they are, and that person who marries a guy in prison is going to have a kid from another relationship, and that fucking kid is going to basically get raised by a sort of conjugal visited psychopathic stepdad who's in the mm-hmm. joint and then have the fucking stigma of that let's just kill him what we're, is, we're overcrowded in prisons let's just fucking kill him what do we what need is your for? assessment of women who fall in love with serial killers it's easy there's many women who have huge uh intimacy issues and they say they want to be married or they want to be in a relationship but they really don't and this is a way to have a fake relationship without wow. ever being intimate. So you get to have all the shit you want in a relationship minus the intimacy which you can't tolerate because you were probably molested by your dad, who I'd like to kill. Thank you. That's how it goes. Now for guys, there's no such thing as guys doing this because we want to fuck. Right. That's all we want to do. Right. I'm trying to think of famous women in prison. Eileen Wuornos. Yeah, there's, there's no, no dude, on no the dude going, man, if I could just get my cock through that fucking lucite slot they have over there, that'd be awesome. Yeah, there's no- Where you, where you have the conversation with the yeah, little phone? Yeah, you got to <laughs> drop down and pop up. I can do it. A lot of guys can't. We yeah. Curve in the right way then. Mm-hmm. All that's right, called well, Peroni's disease. But that's all I know. 
the point is there's no version of that because guys want physical contact. These women don't want the physical contact. They don't want the intimacy, but they want the emotional part of it. And nobody writes a letter like a guy who's in in the hole and wants to fuck. You know what I mean? Well, that's just true. I don't have... I'm a I'm I'm considered by the New York Times a fantastic writer. Okay. Okay. But I don't write any good love letters mm. because I have access to pussy <laughs> and a television set. You see what I'm saying? Do you, so you're saying if you were on the island where all you had was wine and jerky, you'd be writing Lynette love letters? Yeah, and then putting them in the bottle. The Mangria bottle, <laughs> passing him out to no sea. No one like does a, that anymore, like or a possibly Kevin Costner ever. Costner movie. Yeah, yeah. No, you put a guy in a cement hole with no windows and no television set, and all you do is give him a pencil and a steno pad. He's gonna, in his refractory period, write some pretty fucking good love letters mm. to the outside. Now, uh, the second these guys ever got out. They'd start fucking these chick sisters and then dump them and, and then probably go do some k- killing, yeah. kill somebody else. But from inside the joint, they are a Cyrano de Bergerac and they're writing amazing right. letters. So the chicks who are on the outside who don't want the intimacy, but they want the letters, digging it. Remember Prisoner David he used to call in the radio mm-hmm. show? He'd have mm-hmm. like elaborate comedy bits prepared because he had nothing but time on his hands. Were they good? I'm sure he w- they were great for from prison. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm saying, I'm sure if he was on the outside, he wouldn't have quite the same level yeah, of preparation. They were on a Lynch par, you know? <laughs> but Lynch got a lot on his plate. Wait, huh? have you ever seen them together in the same room? Ooh, maybe that was, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, well, speaking of prison and crime and uh, the dark stories, let's talk about Steubenville. We mm-hmm. haven't talked about it yet, yeah. but it's uh, in the news. It's been in and out of the news for a really long time because initially it was social media that covered the rape case in Steubenville, Ohio. There were charges that it was covered up. There's charges that uh, the cops are corrupt, that they were protecting the rapists because they're on the football team. The two or two of yeah, the the two rapists, although there's mm-hmm. other people who are involved in this now, mm-hmm. they were accused of repeatedly raping a drunk sixteen year old girl at a series of parties. And a lot of this came out because they took video of part of it. They videoed themselves talking about her, saying that she was, uh, you know, essentially dead. Like, that's how unconscious she at, was. At a series of parties? Yeah, there were there were a number of parties they went to. There's video of one. Of th- okay, I should say, I don't know how many people are saying this, but they penetrated her with their fingers, and that is considered rape in Ohio. Uh-huh. And there's video of one of them doing this to her in a car. That's first base in California, <laughs> by the way. Um, and that's before the salad. She, At least that's the way I roll. She had zero. You're old school. I'm old school. She had zero memory of this. Drop a digit on you while I'm picking you up. She mm-hmm. remembered throwing up, but she had no memory of anything else. Poor John mm-hmm. But <laughs> it, it came out because of the text. Like, there's almost a real-time account of what happened based on the text that the various people were sending out and the videos and things mm-hmm. like that. And one uh, of the... All right, okay. so... They don't have intercourse with her. As far as I understand, correct. That is correct. Oh, okay. See, they want they to work this out because there's like sodomy laws. And, you know, when I think sodomy, I go right to the, For the good stuff. To the good stuff. You know what I mean? And it turns out sometimes sodomy is something else. You right, know? yeah. And oftentimes it is. And then when I, when I go rape, you know, I, I, I learned, know. you know, my coach told me when you go half speed raping, that's when you get hurt. You right. gotta go when I when someone says this is, rape. Was this Duke? I think Duke Gallagher told me that many years ago. <laughs> Your I, was, hero. I was eight. When I hear rape, I think rape, and when I hear sodomy, I think sodomy. And somebody needs to kind of explain what we're really talking about. Okay, here. well, see, I feel I. I I'm he- I'm was hesitant to even bring this part up because I feel like a jerk as if I'm suggesting that this is not really rape, and that's not what I'm trying no, to no. say. No, no, we'll, but- we'll make fun. Of, I mean, we'll we'll. Um, We'll crucify the guys, but I just want to mm-hmm. get the, the, the full extent but the guy, of the crime. That's the thing, though, is that the guys aren't really being crucified. One is sentenced to a minimum of two years in a juvenile correctional facility, and the other one is sentenced to a minimum of one year. They both could be in detention until they're 21, but they're really it's really not a hard sentence that they're getting. But, all right, they put their fingers inside yes. of this person. And then the one who was sentenced to two years got a stiffer sentence 
because he had disseminated images of her, which they're saying is disseminating child porn. So she was she was passed out, completely out, and they like gave her the finger. Yeah, and and then what else do they do? Is that all? They videoed her. They do any and... oral anything? Oh, there. I I that I don't know. That's not. Mm. Uh, they haven't said that, but there um, there were po- photos of her with semen on her. Ugh. Yeah. I'm going to hit off that jerky. Um, yeah, that's not. Wow. But by the but way, it was, it was, you want to know the difference between men and women? Sure. Guys can have an orgasm with seven other dudes standing around. Like, you're holding my beer. I got beat off. Yeah. Women, you, you guys, you guys, you got to light a fucking candle. You got to think about a horse and somebody on it. You know what I mean? A, a horse. Be a, we got Sometimes just a horse. We need curtains moving. Yeah, so we got to get a guy. The breeze, just to, the, I, I, the breeze is all wrong. Just yeah, we got. What do we got? Four knots out of the east. <laughs> I need three point two coming out of the southwest. Yeah, yeah and the check someone, the newspaper. What time is the sun setting? Curtains got to be moving. It's got to, you know, you got to have Willowy. a whole thing. Oh, yeah. There's no way. I like to see a silhouette. Well, you could be fucking standing around some party with like Rihanna pumping in the background and four of your other friends just standing around drunk. Going, come on, diddle yourself. Let's right. go get to orgasm. There. The video that came out with one of them talking about what was going on, like you watch it and you hate these kids because there's just no conscience. I mean, they're just talking about her that like laughing about Mm -hmm. raping her. Yeah. So it's pretty awful. All right. So they go into a uh, detention center. But does that mean they're in like they're they're going to juvie, right? Yes. All right. Well, at least they're going to juvie. And then uh, two Mm -hmm. more girls were arrested for harassing the victim on Twitter and Facebook. And I feel like, hey, if you harass someone on Twitter and Facebook, you can be arrested because I have a lot of people that I need to call someone about. Uh, first off, how... Making death, thre- death threats. How horrible a human being are you for fucking with the victim? Yeah. And uh, girls are great, ta- aren't they? They're st- I love them. I they all hate the each best. other. They hate each other so much. It's how it's how I know it's I, I it's how I it's how I rest easy every night knowing there'll never be a, a female president <laughs> even though women did I say rest easy women I vote for any bitch that's right that's the thing is that uh, I think these are kind of the favorite sons of the town they're part of the football program right. and so she was really ganged up on by there weren't a lot of people yeah. who were supporting her at the, yeah initially. but let's not leave a digital paper trail of you making fun of the horribly traumatized right. victim women are the majority in the united states and if you think about any group like if gays were the majority and there was a gay candidate he's in in a cum slide i mean <laughs> it's funny blacks majority blacks in hispanic majority hispanic in chicks majority do not mean chicks getting into the oval office interesting it depends Interesting. What's she like? Uh, you're not going to like her after about 10 minutes. You guys would be pulling Oh, is she trying hair. too hard? She's trying I too hard. I hate that. Oh, yeah. my God. And she thinks she's all that. Ugh, she thinks this shit doesn't stink, Yeah, right? that's right. Well, she thinks of herself as uh, hot shit on a silver platter, but she's really cold diarrhea in a Dixie, <laughs> Dixie cup. cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one thing that, that uh, women do, which I think is funny and mm. annoying, mm. is... They'll tell you about someone that they don't like, and they'll be like, and then she blah, 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 blah. And then, like, 20 minutes later, you don't still don't understand what she did that you didn't like and why you're supposed to agree. Well, I've had this in life, and uh, I'm kind of the wrong guy to talk to, but I was talking to a friend of mine who's a dad, and he was saying he pulled his son and our daughter. What the hell was it? Anyway, out of, like, soccer. And you know when people are telling you stuff and you do agree with the other person and they're Mm -hmm. going, well, you know, she's not a very good soccer player. And the coach was playing all the good players three quarters of the time and only playing my daughter one quarter of the time. And I was like, well, here's the options. The option is, is you split it right down the middle. So good players sit on the bench half the time and your crappy daughter goes out there and kicks the ball out of bounds the other half the time. That's one option. Uh, It doesn't seem fair to the players that may be practicing harder. Maybe it's God given, but they're excelling at this. But you're going to split it right down the middle. 
The other option is your crappy kicking daughter plays more than the good players. I don't think that's an option. And unfortunately, we're only left with option C, which is plays less than the good players, which is sort of how it always was. And it should motivate your daughter to work a little harder or quit. Doesn't matter to me. Or work a little harder and uh, get into that position where they play the lion's share of the time. So what did you do during the conversation? He asked me, like, well, and I was going, well, the good, like, the, the thing is, is nobody should sit on the bench for the entire game. But when I played football, the good players played all the time, and the bad players just played special teams. And then at the end, they put a couple of the, what we like to call scrubs in at the end to mop up. Thank you. Um, can sports people. Are you one of them? Are you I into am. sports? Can someone uh, yes. explain to me the function of a relief pitcher? Because I don't know if you know about this. Greg, a lot of people have been tweeting me this. Greg Proops at a show was asked who would be on your all-star podcast team. Mm-hmm. And he named you and me. Mm-hmm. And he said I would be the relief pitcher. Mm-hmm. What would I be doing? Just think the person that's not nearly as good as the starter. Think sloppy seconds. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay. The guy had to go last in that whole rape ordeal. Like, think, <laughs> think that. Got to go last. Oh, yeah. Had to. So is no, this an no, 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 <laughs> no. This is the the specialist, the closer, yeah. the setup. Oh, okay. You're I like think a, I think I'm. I think you're the pitcher, maybe. Yeah. And then the relief pitcher. Yeah. So like when you get tired and are no longer good, I come in. <laughs> right. But yeah, that's that that's what you do. That's the you're you're the Dennis Eckersley of news girls. Yeah. I mean, I know you've been told that three times today yeah. already. Giving up bombs to Kirk Gibson. <laughs> See, now I don't know what we're talking about anymore, again. Uh, he was with the A's. Right. Kirk Gibson had a bum knee playing for the Dodgers. It hit a home run. Legendary moment in baseball. Yeah. Actually. That's all right. Thanks. That's a, Thanks look, for it's making a good, it Look, you me. made the team, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did. All right. It's this kind of attitude that'll get you sent back to the bullpen <laughs> or back to the mud hens No, I'm Albuquerque. really happy with it. I just want to know what it means or what it suggests. I go in there and I start and I give... I try to give it between six and seven good innings, and then you come in as a specialist and shut everyone down. Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Lululemon, are you familiar with this company? They make yoga clothes. Speaking of yoga, like we were earlier, they're a big, famous I'm, yoga I'm, brand. I'm, you know what? I've decided we have way too many clothes and way too many shoes. <laughs> I see commercials for all different kinds of shoes all the time, and I realize I don't think we need that many different kinds of shoes. Yeah. You need the funeral wedding shoes, and then you need the tennis shoes, and then meh, maybe the kick around the house or go jogging shoes, the extra set in case you step in dog shit shoe, but not the thousands. Right. You know, the ones with the toes carved in, and then the ones that are like cross-training ones, and the super light ones, and like the air hirachis, and then the high top. It's just the idea that there's a shoe for basketball and a shoe for indoor volleyball, which are completely different shoes, except for they're both played on the exact same f- surface, shows that we're mm-hmm. getting taken to the uh, shoe shed. And That's the shit's, right. The shit's being beat out of us. Well, this is about yoga pants. Lululemon is recalling they're yo- a certain style of yoga pant because they're see-through. Mm-hmm. Apparently they're see-through. That's what they're saying. Uh, and they're going to take a big financial hit because of this. There's a lot of chicks wearing yoga pants these days. Right. And, and aren't they kind of, sorry, people, sweatpants basically, just fashionable sweatpants? Yeah. And I, it's kind of it's kind of tough on the, on the fat chicks because it's bad when, you know, like – I feel like when the gauchos were in style in the 70s, the fat chicks rejoiced. And the yoga pants, that's not good. They're unforgiving. You can see every curve and every dimple. And you can see inside, apparently, with the see-through ones. Mm -hmm. They're sheer. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I I feel like I have... I feel like I grew up with like three T-shirts. Like when you see a picture of me all through my life, I was wearing this. There's a good chance to be wearing the same T-shirt. I have drawers filled with shit. As you see, I wear the same shirts every single night. But I have closets filled with shit because I don't know what to do. Like I, like you need a stylist. Well, well I need no, a stylist. I don't want. Well, what would I? I, I don't want that here's either. what happens. Bill O'Reilly's people send me five jackets, five shirts, and five ties. What are they trying to say? <laughs> I, I thought about that. <laughs> it's, it's it's basically the attire, a ver- version of someone getting you for Christmas a mouthwash <laughs> and deodorant and deodorant. Yeah, so they give me like jackets and ties. And I, I don't know how to make a tie at all. And other people claim they know how to make a tie. It looks like uh, Stan Laurel. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Or is it Oliver Hardy? Yeah. Either Whatever. Uh, it comes up. It, they always make it on them because they can't make yeah. it. They can't make it on you. Mm-hmm. They make it on. And by the way, you want to talk about the uncomfortable silence? Walk into the car with the groceries. Wait till the wardrobe guy. <laughs> Our gay wardrobe guy in the man show would make the tie on me. We'd just be standing face to face for five minutes while he was doing the whole Were thing. Were you trying to overcompensate? I got a boner. Okay. <laughs> Anytime I'm handled, it doesn't matter what the capacity is. Anyway, he was making the tie and they always make it and they make it too short on you. And they then they try to put it on themselves and they make it, but they always fuck it up. And then they pull it over like a noose and they go, you hang yourself. And then they do it that way. <laughs> So I have ties. So now what do I do with the ties? What do I do? I have a thousand belts, a thousand ties. Every time I do a show, they give you all the wardrobe and shit. And you have these designer jeans. I always wear the same jeans and the same shirts, same whatever. So I just ferry all the stuff in here and give away as many T-shirts and sweatpants. But what am I supposed to do? Take these blazers, like these expensive, nice jackets you're to Bill to keep O'Reilly? Them and wear them on the show. I know, but they're all like blue. They're all like the same. Oh. They're all the same color. I don't know. It's weird that they sent you a bunch of the same color. I got to be... It's nice, though. I got to get a gig as a 70s sports anchor. You know what I mean? Where I could really make use of those. Good luck. Hey, I, I got something called a can-do spirit, all right? I like that. Yeah. I feel like our guest probably knows how to tie a tie. Do you know how to make a tie, I John? I do. How do you learn? Father. No. So there you go. Well, those two guys. Yeah. Now I hate my dad even you more. Don't. Yeah. Mm. I... I don't see now. There's a weird thing which you guys tell me. I've never bought a lottery ticket. I like to take that one to the grave, mm-hmm. and now I like to take not making a tie to the grave. And I'm taking never had calamari to the grave. Oh, uh, I just don't really. Want to. Yeah, you're missing out. I know that's what everyone tells me. I know this probably isn't the case, but can I have that huge? pile of calamari you haven't been eating yes yeah no, i i, I put it aside because it's I gonna come in handy calamari. someday all right mental note if we ever go out to dinner we double down on ordering Extra. the calamari so we eat it all thanks, right to our thanks, head thanks guys mm-hmm. yeah I, I have memories of my mom uh doing my dad's tie mm-hmm. oh really yeah but i have i don't know how to tie a tie jesus christ your dad dresses like a jewish pimp <laughs> He's so fucking dapper. Like, I can't believe he wasn't making his own ascots like in the second grade. I, <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't look know. into he probably, that. Because he, he was married before my mom and then he was single. And I'm sure he knows how to do it. But I think it's like having my mom offer to do it. One more half a story. What do we got? Hogan's here? Heroes is going to be coming to the big screen. <laughs> you sound excited. I the creators of the TV show finally got the rights to it. I, so now they're going to work on bringing finally. it. Finally. I just was saying uh, to somebody who was like, uh, they saw HR Puff and stuff for the first time, and they were like, holy shit, how bad is, oh, it was Mike Lynch. He said, holy, it's so fucking bad. And I said, oh, you got to watch Sigma and the Sea Monster, which they were trying to make. Sid and Marnie Croft. These guys are fucking hacks. Most of these guys, here, here's the whole thing. You're not supposed to warm over shit from many years ago. Mm -hmm. You're just not supposed to. And like I always said about Land of the Lost, there's two of the, the, the planet and the solar system can be squarely cut into two pieces. There are the people who have never heard of Land of the Lost, and then there are the people who've heard of Land of the Lost and recognize it as one of the biggest pieces of shit that's ever graced their television set. So though that's your audience, Land of the Lost, producers of Land of the Lost, fucking hacks, Sid and Marty Croft and fucking Hanna-Barbera and the rest of you hacks. They're so bad at what they do and they do all this shit. And the reason these shows and here's why they're fucked. They're all fucked because they made shows when there was zero competition. It'd be like you making the world's shittiest jerky and there is no <laughs> other place we could eat a dried cow or pig or buffalo. And we said at a buy it all from you and so you started thinking your jerky was good but your jerky was shit because you had no competition well their shows were shit because they had no competition and thus they think they're good and not only they think they're good they think their piece of shit shows are good they're not good but they try then to re to try to warm over that shit going hey what about the momentum that we had a scant 47 years ago (laughs) you're never going to regain it because there's shows on television that people want to see now. 
Hogan's heroes would never fucking see the light of day today. Now, it wasn't as bad as Land of the Lost, and it wasn't as bad as Dukes of Hazard, and it wasn't as bad as some of these other shows, but you have to go up against, you know, the you have to go up against Homeland now and Breaking Bad and whatever the show Americans, the Americans, good. whatever show I could possibly be in. That's right. That's right. The Adam Carolla vehicle. That's right. The list of movies, like recent movies that are bad versions of old TV shows so far outweighs the list of movies that are good versions of old TV shows, like the Starsky and Hutch, The A-Team, the list goes on. Like well, they may be witched and stuff. Like, what the, the lost. fuck? These are horrible ideas that would Why never... Why are we still doing this? Because they're fucking idiots, and they're, they're creatively bankrupt. They're creatively bankrupt, but they're not bankrupt bankrupt, which means... They should be at least decent businessmen. Why are they still flogging this Here's, useless horse? They have zero imagination. All they want is Pink something Panther? that they've heard of. They, you have to have heard of something. Right. And if you've heard Battleship. of something, then it has a much higher likelihood of making a fresh-pitched movie. So they warm over this shit from the past. And you have, again, like I, I said in my book, I was walking on the lot. And my dear departed friend, Alan Kirschenbaum, said, inside that office is... Marty Croft or Sid or one of them. And he said, you want to go in there and meet a legend? I said, no. And he said, you don't want to meet Marty Croft? I said, no, he's a fucking hack. He said, he's a hack. He's been doing this for 50 years. He's 88 years old. He's in his office working right now. I said, what's he working on? Something new or a piece of shit that he's licensing from the 60s that sucked back then and would never see the fucking light of day today because i've seen all those shows they're mind-numbingly bad and yes that's what he's doing he's trying to take a piece of shit because he doesn't have a creative bone in his body and he's trying to sell the same piece of shit 30 times he already had his run these people should be fucking taken out to a the fucking town square and flogged for all the brain cells they've killed. And now they want to introduce a new generation of eyeballs to the shit of the past. Fuck you guys. Corolla's Come up with a new excited. idea for a movie. For a change, Hollywood. Come up with a fucking new like idea. Melting point. That's right. Make melting point. So in the <laughs> guts to fucking take on medium yoga. Head on. Sorry. You don't have the guts. Sorry. That, that that's the news. I'm Allison Rosen. <laughs> Zip it, cunt. If we're the making... trigger that master the trigger that masturbates sun hand now. <laughs> that was the news with Allison you Rosen. Gotta see, you gotta see a rerun of you going. <laughs> I know. I didn't know what direction to go. All right. Uh, what can I say, John? It's been a slice. Crave jerky. That's with a K. Crave jerky. The website cravejerky.com. You want to taste something good? You want some real jerky? You go to CraveJerky.com. John, a delight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, next time I'm uh, up uh, Napa Way, I'd like a little tour I of understand the you're doing some race car driving soon. Sonoma. Yes. That's yes. where we are. Oh, you are? Yes. Well, then I'll uh, come, miles on, away. come on by and say hi. You're yeah. five miles uh, out of Sonoma or away from uh, no, Infineon? No, we're uh, five miles into Sonoma from Infineon, but 10 miles where you make your wine in Napa. We're right in between. Love it. I will uh, drop by and say hi. So until next time, this is Adam, for John, for Allison, for Bald, saying mahalo. Come on, diddle yourself. Let's right. go. Get to orgasm. Subscribe to YouTube.com slash VPN for more Adam Carolla, including the best bits turned cartoon, Anna Mashups, plus other great shows like Comedy Bang Bang and Who Charted. That's YouTube.com slash VPN. Hey, kitties, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and catch any podcasts you might have missed at YouTube.com slash Adam Carolla. That's YouTube.com slash me.